Welcome to Comfort Avenue number two. I'm James Morris Jr. This is my last martial art video for tonight. Uh, it's not my last video of the night, but it's my last video in martial arts for tonight. So I put up most of my weapons. I still have the short sticks. We don't need to worry about that. With this demonstration, it's basically all talk. So, as a martial artist, ow, I didn't mean to do that, that shit hurts. As a martial artist, you have to understand the do's, don'ts, the ins, the outs, the wheels, the won'ts, and the real penalty behind martial arts if you are in a fight. You need to know quite a few things that are going to be factors in this fight. One, your skills. Two, your opponent's skills. Three, location. Four, situation. Five, honor in a street fight and honor in the ring. Uh, there's two different concepts of that. For the ring, it means a lot to be very honorable. In the streets, a lot of times honor is thrown out the window. And so by saying that, I'm only going to tell you that only you can take and lose or restore your honor. Alright? So let's begin. So if you watched the other video, you seen Bound Fight. And you got your lesson on that. Uh, recap. You know, I wrapped this damn thing around my wrist. I taught you about having it in front. Versus having it in the back and how the situation will change. It's easier to fight with your hands tied in front of you than it is to fight with your hands tied behind you. I also tell you how difficult it is when your hands are tied cross. And when your hands are tied cross, trust me, that means somebody really didn't want you to escape. So they got your hands tied like this, where this is your swinging motion in your range. So I talked about body mechanics and this is where your body mechanics become the most important factor in your fight. All right, just for the sake I'm putting this back on. So just in case you didn't understand where I was going from. Your body mechanics, your range of motion. When your hands are tied, this is your full range of motion from the front side to the side. Knowing that right there is half of how you're going to win this fight. Knowing what you can do when your hands are tied up is half the battle right there. Because you'll be able to know, can I get it up here? Can I get it here? How low? How low? Without having to kneel. And you will may have to kneel or you may have to jump up or do something to avoid a foot sweep, to avoid a spinning back kick. Versus a spinning hook kick. When you slow that down, you'll be able to see the difference. I'm also on grass, so it's kind of hard to manifest the exact option of that kick. You know, I taught you your basics because you're going to need basics. You are never going to use a tornado kick in a fight in real life. You're on the street, somebody's coming at you with a beer bottle. You don't have time to think, you don't have time to react. And thinking of doing a tornado kick versus doing a tornado kick. That shit's not an option. They're coming at you. That's your best move right there. And if not that one, a straight standard front kick. Or this is a stepping side versus a side. All right? So you have a conglomerate of options. When your hands are tied, your hands are tied. And you need to know your body mechanics. You need to know your range of motion. You need to know what you are capable of doing in cases of an emergency. Fear. Fear can be a blessing and a curse. Just depends on the type of fear. If you have petrified fear where you're frozen, shh, you're dead. Can't have that. You have that fear that says, I'm going to survive this no matter the cost. Might cost me an arm or a leg, but I'm going to survive it. That's the fear that keeps you moving. So, guys coming at you, boom front kick. That's not good enough. 
jumping front kick. That's not good enough, you may have a problem. But that should be good enough. So now you have to target your target zones. For all those people who are going to tell me pressure points are bullshit, I'm going to tell you, you probably haven't had them done to you correctly by the correct person. So I'm not here to delegitimize anybody, but I will tell you now, the right person put your ass in a Fuji Warlock. Fuji Warlocks are based on pressure points. So I want to put you in a Kamora Lock. It is based on pressure points and your might versus their right and the ability and durability of their body versus your body, weight's a factor, strength's a factor, but pressure points, when they got your hand twisted up and it's locked up and then they got your arm behind your back and a chicken wing, oh trust me, tapping may be your only option. In a real fight, no one's gonna give a shit if you're tapping, no one. Because rage, adrenaline, and anger is flying through their body and they're trying to hurt you really badly. So your target zones, if you know you can't kick this high, kick a knee, you know? Yeah, it's wrong and unhonorable by tradition. But in a street fight, none of those senseis that have taught you to fight are going to give a flying fuck about tradition when your ass is about to be handed to you. So kick a knee. You know, I'm short, so most people's knees are right there at my mid to low range area. Now, if their knees are up here, that means I'm fighting Shaq or Yao Ming. You know? And they have range, so it's going to be a difficult fight for me. However, it's going to be more difficult for them because I have gravity and a lower sense of gravity. So they have to swing down at me because I'm only 5'3", which gives me the option of taking out a leg. Now, if they're throwing a kick, I need to be prepared. So blocks, blocks. The thing about martial arts. Now let's get serious. Take off these ropes. Let's get serious. The thing about martial arts is there's so damn many of them, and all of them have equal opportunity options of messing you up. All right? And the thing you need to understand is mm -hmm. not all styles are the same. A lot of the kicks are the same, but not all styles are the same. If you're fighting someone mm -hmm. who is Capoeira or Lombada, their styles are the same. But if you're fighting someone who's doing Drunken Master, they can throw a Capoeira kick in there. So don't think that just because they're doing something that you've never seen before, that the kicks aren't the same. What's this? Mm -hmm. Basic front kick. Where do you learn it? Karate, Kung Fu, Taekwondo, Kenpo, Akio, Jiu Jitsu. Yes, you do learn kicks in Jiu Jitsu. Not a lot of them, but you do learn them. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, no kicks. Because you're on your ass, you're rolling around, you learn Kamora locks and chokes and shit. However, here's the thing about that. They got to get you down. They got to get you down. If they can't get you down, all that ground game ain't done shit for them. Because they have to get you down. I do not have anything against Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu other than the fact that I personally suck at it. I learned it in the Army. That does not change the fact that I personally suck at it. Now, standing up. Boom, strike. Boom, boom counter strike. Boom, you know. Boom, boom. Boom, yo, I got a, I got a stand game, yo, I'm a stander, I'm a standing striker, yo, that's pretty much the basis right there. The trick is, I got to get through my opponent's defenses, she's blocking, 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 all right, now, what did the guy change his styles on? We went from doing this, to now he's doing this, he just started doing tight fighting, did you recognize the shift? Watch, the only thing that shifts is my arms, boom, went right up here to tight fighting. Now he's not jumping up and down, he's bobbing back and forth. All right, well, guess what else does that? Praying Mantis. Mm -hmm. Mantis does that same stutter step shit. You know what else does that? It's sideways. Drunken Master. You know what else does that? Capoeira. Like I said, all martial arts are relative. You just change the name, you change the name of a few kicks. Watch this. Taekwondo, tornado kick, watch this, Kimpo, hurricane kick. So I guess if you do it in Thai fighting, they must call it the typhoon kick. You feel the joke there? You see the motion. Thai fighting, boom, bunch of knees. They got some asinine front kicks. <laughs> they look just like that, <laughs> they do. So, you have to recognize the style. Taekwondo. 
everything pops out. Boom. Yeah. You know, stop, pop, bring it back. Kung Fu, no waste of motion. Boom, boom. I understand. Karate, boom. Come down, boom. Come down. So again, depending on who's teaching you what and what they were taught, you will follow their style until your body mechanics show you what you can and can't do. As of my injury and my hip replacement, my body mechanics, everything on this side, there's no power behind it. It's low. I probably have to train more. I haven't reached the five year mark yet, so I have to train light. So it's not that I can't do it, it's just that I should not be doing it. But your body mechanics work differently. What used to be a great powerful kick, that tornado kick I did, now it's great for show. There's no power behind it. I can get momentum. If I'm lucky and I'm fighting somebody who's inexperienced, I'm gonna win. If I'm fighting somebody who's an ace, I got a problem. That's the thing you have to understand in real life. If you're fighting someone who has no skills or no fight or hasn't ever been in a fight, yeah, you can have an easy victory. It's nothing. If you find somebody who hasn't been in any, any real fights or experiences and never been in trouble with in their life, you can have an easy victory because they don't know shit. It's easy to beat up someone who can't fight you back. That's like P's and Q's right there. Or dot your I's, cross your T's, and that guy's going to sleep. You know? Now, let's flip the script a little bit. Guy might not have been in a fight, but he has raw power. He has beginner's luck. He may put your ass slam the fuck to sleep. Just out of straight beginner's luck. Yeah, never know. Fights don't have a determined outcome. Not a real fight. A real fight does not have a predetermined outcome where you guys are going to square off and you automatically know this guy's going to knock me the fuck out. You know, that's not part of the thought process. When you're in a fight, it's like, all right, I'm going to try to fuck this motherfucker up. And he's thinking the same thing. And if you're women, you're both thinking the same thing. You know, I'm going to fuck this guy up. Or if you're girls, I'm going to fuck this girl up. Nine times out of ten, you ladies are probably calling each other the B word or the C word. Um, B-I-T-C-H-C-U-N-T. Or W-H-O-R-E. Or H-O-E. You women can say those words to each other. And it's cool. I prefer not to call you any of the names that I just spelled because... You're women, and I love you, and I love boobs. So I'm not going to insult women. But that doesn't mean women are any less dangerous than men. Hell, the basis of my kung fu is Wing Chun, who is the most dangerous woman on the planet. All right? So if y'all think Ronda Rousey was dangerous, you go read up on Wing Chun. Now, if you read The Art of War, it's a good read, but, you know, shit happens. So here's the thing. Your body mechanics only allow you to do so much. So you have to push your limits and go beyond. Now what you also need to understand, and I said this to myself in the shower this morning, so I'm gonna say it to y'all now so it'll be a permanent reminder all over the internet that fighting styles are like a fingerprint. This is a quote that I got from Bandit Man, the animated series back in the 90s. It is true to life. I have lived by this quote for all of my life since it was said. Fighting styles is like a fingerprint. You can cover yourself up to look differently but your fighting style rarely changes. You can change the angle. You can change the movement. So my normal kick here, let's say I change it sideways. My normal kick here, I change it straight. Let's say a guy's coming up behind me, I kick this guy, the other guy pulls me back and I throw my foot here, you know, your body mechanics. But your fighting style is like a fingerprint. If you use the same move one too many times, People are going to know that it is you. Especially when you have superficial moves that are like uh, two complete rotations. Uh, like uh, they do a tornado kick, but it's two complete rotations. It's pointless in a real fight, but you know, for show, it's fucking awesome. In a real fight, you may not get the chance to make the rotation. Yeah, it just depends on who you're fighting. Like I said, if you're fighting someone like me who has experience, and you get down, and you're doing all this, and you get that like ice skating spin, by the time you see me, you see mm -hmm. my fist mm -hmm. or my foot. And that's gonna be as soon as you go here. As soon as you get here, your eyes are off me, boom. I'm not gonna let you pull that move off because you're building up momentum that could probably hurt me with your kick. And that's the thing about fighting that y'all also need to understand. Momentum 
is a very important factor in a fight. Don't think that it's not. Momentum is a very important factor in a fight. Your speed, your momentum, your power, your impact, all of that shit is very important because this, that's a small kick. It looked powerful because I made that face. You know, but if you're not coming at me and I'm not really putting power behind it, then it's just a regular ass kick. Now, if I do it like this, without the face, you know, that's a little bit more power. But if you're coming at me and I come at you and I jam that some bitch into you, that's going to be the difference maker. Your momentum versus my momentum, your skill versus my skill. My impact in a target zone versus where you were coming. So if I hit you anywhere down this central plane, I'm gonna do some damage, you know? But since I'm a small guy, and more than likely you guys are probably bigger than me, I'm going to hit you where I know I can hurt you. This goes back to the pressure points and why people are saying pressure points are effective. I say this lovingly to every martial artist here watching. I say this lovingly to every martial artist on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Rustlers. I'm going to tell you right now, pressure points fucking work. If they are applied properly, great body mechanics, they work. So I want to end this with one last quote. You know, you can pick up another style, but you can't pick up another you. So whatever style that you added to your collective, it is there forever. Arsenals don't run out. They improve. So basically the long and short of that is, um, whatever you can learn, you add to your arsenal. You will take out the shit that you don't need. As Bruce Lee would say, the art of Jeet Kune Do is to simply simplify. So you don't overuse stuff that you're never going to use. Like I said, tornado kicks, Great for movies. Full rotations, great for movies. Back flipping kangaroo kick, great for movies. Pancake, great for movies. That's what I was taught was the Shaolin layback, but nowadays they call it the pancake. The kick up, not the kip up, because it initially was called the kick up. Um, great for movies. Great for entertainment. In a real fight, you may kip up or kick up into getting kicked in the face. So, also, if your body mechanics don't work that way, it's better to roll across the ground and get the hell out of the way than try to kick up and go straight into another move. Now, for you younger people, yeah, that shit would be just fucking awesome. Because I used to do that. But, in my 40s, not really an option. Now it's all about survival of the fittest. And when you are fighting, you will learn two things in life. What works, works. What doesn't work, you don't need it. So, that being said, keep that in mind. And this is Kung Fu Havoc number two. Be seeing you. Thanks for watching.